We interrupt this program for a special news bulletin. Step right up, got tickets on sale in today's episode. Trains coming off the rails. Watch it all burn from the screen on your phone. But don't you worry about it, you're safe at home. Every talking head will tell you everything's fine. It's the blind lead in the blind. Yeah, it's a circus out here. So when Mark was telling me, just to say this right back then, he said that they went into all the machines, all the machines, 100%. And they cut the wires and kept telling them the wires. It had all the OVOs, the valve tabulators, had a RC, RJ45 jack, the Ethernet. Um, we put a device in that and broke it, as well as opened the machine, and we physically <laughs> cut the wires going from my access the motherboard to the jack. So they have physically been damaged to the point where they're not functioning. The wires that went from the motherboard to the jack were cut. So you're saying? Even if somebody plugged it in, plugged in a, a network cable, it's useless because the wires are physically Did you expect the board for any wireless or for any other users or is it? There is a USB port on it, that's how we can get the data from No, I'm talking all that as the board. There is a USB port for the collection data, there's not a USB port on the board. I found them on the board. Okay. Remember, I'm speaking from nine years of experience with gotcha. seven different vendors. I've seen one and a lot of the boards have, and, and this is the phrase of vendors. That's for future enhancement, not for this version. But here's the thing, if you have a USB on the motherboard connection, I could put anything in there. I could put you had your storage, I could put a wireless device, I could do anything I wanted with that board. Do you have that board of course and everything down and this is what y'all get verified. So, 
What Clay is saying is that these failed requirements and lack of documenting the cut wires invalidate the certification of the voting machines set forth by the EAC and VVSG. Listen to this call between Councilman Joe Brazil, Director Barr and Deputy Parkinson where they change their story. Now admitting that they lied about it all. Now I've never personally said anything negative about you guys. I'm just asking questions. The Caucus of America put that video out. I don't control what those people do. I have no control over them. But the fact is, is you you said you were paying for it. You, you, you posted it on your Facebook page. Posted what on a Facebook page? I, well, I don't know. And I, I posted pictures of reality. And then you threw a hickey thing and blocked me. I blocked you, Mark, because you're putting, you, you, you're, you keep saying stuff that we didn't cut the wires. We only unplugged them. But the fact is, you said you said cut the wires seven times. You said you it know, seven you times. you know why I did that? No. I did that to elicit a response from your expert. When, they, when the vendor came in and updated the software two years ago, the software update rendered that port inoperable. Even if you plug something into it, it would not but why would you say you cut the wires? Stop, Joe, I'm talking here. Go on, hurry up. The vendor is part of that conversation, said, would you like for us to unplug it while we're in there? Mark, that's not what you said on video. You said you... Sure. Mark. I realized what I said, and I completely made it up. You lied. Why would you lie about that? Because I wanted to elicit a response from your expert, because if he was in fact an expert, would have known that that software update would have rendered it inoperable. So the you expert did not know that. You said you cut the labels, you said it multiple did. times. It was a blatant lie. I made it up. Because your expert didn't know what the hell they were talking about. If he was in fact an expert, he would have said that software update would have negated that issue. He didn't know what the hell he was talking about. Mark, I is, so is that... Is, uh, so how many times have... He's a stupid investigator. He's going to make you and the rest of these people look like a freaking fool. So how many other times... There are no cut wires in the machine. If you, if you lied on that issue, how many other times did you lie? I made it up to elicit a response. Did you pay for that expert? No, they were not paid for. It. Then you got your money's worth. Well, here's the thing. Besides all that, that's not. I'm not calling you about that. Shit, Joe. I, I, I'm calling you, Kurt. Joe. So, so. You're not getting your damn money, okay? So who is this expert Clay Parikh anyways? Good morning, Mr. Parikh. Could you please state your full name for the record? Uh, you know, just briefly go through some of your qualifications uh, with the court. My name is Clay Uday Parikh. I work at Northrop Grumman, a defense contractor. I'm an information security officer. I basically spend my week auditing classified systems, making sure the systems are functioning properly, looking for insider threat and those such actions. I have nine years of experience and three voting labs. It's actually two physical sites because Wiley transferred to NTS Laboratories, National Testing Lab, and then at Pro V and V. In 2008, my very first tasking was to evaluate Wiley Laboratories test procedures in which I had to evaluate the voting system um, guidelines. I have about 20 years of experience in cybersecurity. I have a Master of Science in Cybersecurity. I also have a Bachelor's in Computer Science, a Systems major. I have the Certified Information System Security Professional certification. I've had that for since two, the beginning of 2007. That is the gold standard as far as secu security certifications are considered. I'm also a Certified Ethical Hacker, and I'm also a Certified Hacking Forensic Investigator. So I've worked for Lockheed Martin, which is a good tenure of my time, Lidos Corporation, BAE Systems, 
And in all those capacities, I did information assurance, cybersecurity. I'm currently a top secret clear, but I've had, I've held SCI levels before. I would say he qualifies as an expert, wouldn't you? So here in front of the St. Charles County Council, the self-admitted liar tells us we are just supposed to trust him regarding our elections. Not so fast, Director Barr. So that is what is before you today, is to accept the results of the election. You're not accepting the veracity of the election. I have sworn to you the veracity of the election. You are now taking my word, because I'm the election authority, that the election is correct. I am a cop, and you will respect my authority! Now, why? Why? That's a meaningful thing. If you've got a big population in your country that doesn't believe that your elections are on the level, you need to figure out a way to convince them that the elections are on the level or else you can't have democracy because yeah. it's a faith-based system. Electronic voting machines are secure, which they are not. By the way, that's a lie. In any country that has electronic voting machines is by definition at risk of having its election stolen. By definition. No country that cared about democracy would have electronic voting machines, okay? First thing. But no one even... And by the way, many Democrats have made that point. Not now, but mm -hmm. 10 years ago. While Dominion and ES and S dominate the headlines, let's look at Unison. The voting machines used in St. Charles County that Director Barr loves so much and says are so secure. First, we will establish Unison as a solid long-term Chinese PRC business partner. Unison was founded in 2003 and is headquartered in California. It is owned by International Lottery and Total Lazada Inc., otherwise known as ILTS, and according to SEC filings, the International Lottery and Total are Systems Inc. states that Berjaya Lottery Management of Hong Kong Limited Berjaya actually owns 71.3% of their company. So essentially, Unison is under the umbrella of the Berjaya Corporation. Now bear with me because this is where it gets real interesting. The Bajaya Corporation is partnering with China Sports Lottery Beijing to explore opportunities to jointly develop a third-party lottery market. The parties inked a five-year contract August of 2020. This means China is partnering with Bajaya Corporation, the majority owner of Unison Voting Systems. So why are we using voting systems that have partnerships with China? In fact, on January 31st, 2024, the director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, testified under oath that China has infiltrated our critical infrastructure. Don't take my word for it, though. Listen here. Thank you, Chairman Gallagher, Ranking Member Krishnamurthy, uh, and to the members of the Select Committee for inviting me here to testify today to discuss the FBI's ongoing efforts to protect our nation from actions taken by the Chinese government that threaten American safety and prosperity. And the risk that poses to every American requires our attention now. China's hackers are positioning on American infrastructure in preparation to wreak havoc and cause real world harm to American citizens and communities. Rather, when I talk about the threat posed by China, I mean the government of China, in particular led by the CCP. The CCP's dangerous actions, China's multi-pronged assault on our national and economic security, make it the defining threat of our generation. Now, when I described the CCP as a threat to American safety a moment ago, I meant that quite literally. There has been far too little public focus on the fact that PRC hackers are targeting our critical infrastructure. Critical infrastructure, eh? Guess what that is? You guessed it. Our voting systems. Totally safe and secure though, right? What a joke. In September, a lawsuit was filed in federal court against Director of Election Kurt Barr and Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft for certifying Missouri's 2020 presidential election when they didn't have the legal authority to do so. How is that possible, you ask? Let's rewind. Shortly after the 2000s Bush and Gore election fiasco ended up in the Supreme Court, 
Congress passed the Help America Vote Act or HAVA of 2002 to make sweeping reforms to the nation's voting systems. The act also created the Election Assistance Commission EAC, an oversight board who assists the states with HAVA compliance, distribute HAVA allocated funds, and to certify voting equipment with strict standards. One of the first things the EAC did was create what's known as the Voluntary Voting System Guidelines, known as the VVSG, a set of standards regarding all aspects of the voting process. These guidelines focus on both the security and transparency of our elections, including rules designed to prevent foreign or domestic interference, and for creating a visible record of exactly what happened, so that the public believes that we do have, in fact, a voting system that is fair. VVSG compliance is voluntary because the federal government cannot tell the states how to run elections. But what if the federal government promises millions of dollars for new voting equipment systems if a state adopts the VVSG? Missouri, along with the majority of other states, did just that in their compliance of the Voluntary Voting System Guidelines is now mandatory. One of the focal points of the VVSG standard is the certification and credentialing of tabulation machines to ensure cybersecurity in our election system. An official joint letter to Director Barr, Councilman Baker in Brazil requested all and any current costs pertaining to the current unison voting machines, tabulators, iPads, continual training and maintenance contracts, along with other related items seen in this letter. Director Barr evaded the Council's request for eight months before providing a partial and incomplete accounting report. Makes you wonder where all the federal election money is going, doesn't it? Councilman Brazil sent additional FOIA requests to Director Barr when asked who has access to the voter rolls and are authorized to make changes to voter information. Director Barr refused to provide the council county employee information. The county election division falls under public sector employment. So why is Director Barr refusing to answer? After being informed and confronted about anomalies with the wirelessly connected iPad voting tablets, instead of addressing them, Director Barr accuses sitting judges of election fraud and, quote, going rogue, unquote. What other anomalies has Director Barr overlooked? Who else will he accuse of voter fraud? The next time, it could be you. In addition, Director Barr states in a response letter that between January 26 to 28, 2024, while performing a software update to all the machines was being carried out, they requested that the local certified technician sever the wires of the RJ45 port on the motherboards. Now the auction authority is stating the certified technician cut the wires, not them. This statement is issued only after stating on video that they cut the wires themselves, and then on a phone call said they made it up. Which is it, Director Barr? Were the wires cut by you or by the technicians? Director Barr also provided a test report from Pro v, &V for a wireless test completed in November 2021. The report shows that it is for the state of Ohio and not for Missouri. Is this even a valid report? Is Director Barr falsifying documents? And what's with the duplicated W's? Let's stop for a moment and break this down, shall we? What wires are they talking about? Many viewers may not know what the inside of an average computer looks like and how the input-output ports are connected to the motherboard. So, let's take a look at one. A RJ45 port is also known as a CAT5, or most commonly known as an Ethernet port. You know the one you plug your internet cable into with the little flashing lights to get online. These ports are installed into a computer two main ways. First, the most common way is, the manufacturer solders the port directly onto the motherboard at the factory, along with all the other chips, connectors, and ports. You can see here the typical motherboard showing how the ports are connected directly to the silicone board. Hmm, there are no wires. That's strange. Second, another option is a network interface controller, also known as an Ethernet card or NIC. These controller cards are inserted into vertical slots on the motherboard and are usually an aftermarket upgrade, an addition, or as a replacement. Also known as daughter cards, they too have soldered connector ports and have no wires whatsoever. How weird is that? 
Weird. 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 Basically, this establishes that there are no physical wires to cut. It also adds merit to these questions. Why did Director Barr and Deputy Parkinson lie about cutting wires that every average computer user knows does not exist? Why is the Director of Election Authority now stating that a certified technician is the party to quote, cut the wires, unquote? Let's join in on this January 2024 council meeting where Director Barr states that the continued funding and purchase of Chinese electronic voting equipment, which have been proven to be hackable, is the least costly and the most viable way to spend your tax dollars. He then evades answering Councilman Swanson's question and fails to provide the information that a certified technician cut the wires to the RJ45 ports when asked, when the last time a certified technician serviced the equipment, is Director Barr obfuscating or purposefully omitting pertinent information? They say the cover-up is always worse than the crime. Listen and decide for yourself. Anyway, uh... 21 years ago, I was sitting in this seat, and the people up here and the people sitting here had a problem with the sole, sor sole source with Atkins. I mean, we had a problem then. I think we've all had a problem every year since, but I don't, I don't know that there's any way, uh, any way out of it. Uh, I should say not any way. There isn't any cheap way out of it. All the alternatives I know will actually cost more money. As far as, as, far as cost, continue with what we have is the cheapest way. Mr. Swanson. Hey, now that we've gone through that, I want to get back to a couple other topics of certification. Yes, sir. Has anyone come out and physically certified the machines versus just saying, yes, they're certified because it's due year, et cetera? Have we had somebody through, uh, what is it, the EAC or any other groups come out? So the certification of the unison voting system is done by the EAC, and they do certify the machines and software that unison creates. They do not come to each election authority and certify each machine owned by the election authorities across the 114 jurisdictions of Missouri. So nobody has come to St. Charles County Election Authority and looked at each of our machines and says, this machine is certified. The system is certified not each individual machine. So when was the last time somebody who is certified checked the machines to make sure everything is valid and there's nothing nefarious on it? I'm sorry, can you? Yeah, just for clarification, we don't know if somebody has tampered with them or not. Mm -hmm. Has anybody who has a certification through EAC ever shown up and looked at our machines and made sure that Everything is legit. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. So the answer is... Yeah, earlier this year, we did a uh, maintenance and calibration on all of the machines. So what we what we do there is we open up, we, we just make sure that the, the um, readings header is, is clean, and then we run a, a single ballot through the machine 40 times. And what we're looking for in this particular test is, does it count this ballot correctly all 40 times? Does it ever miscount? Does it like, doesn't count it? Or does it ever count something other than what's counting? And then we do sometimes find that there is a problem with the machine, in which case then Henry Atkins and Son does the servicing to repair those election machines. Um, we also, after the election, we hand count the different races from different precincts to do a spot audit to make sure that the machine count and the hand count match up. And we, al we also will then do, what was that last test? Sorry, I just blanked on the, on the last test. So there are multiple steps of what we do to make sure our machines are, are working and that they are, are functional. But each individual machine doesn't get the, the same certification that the system gets, that the Pro v, v Lab in Huntsville, Alabama does for the system. And so anytime there is more than a de minimis change to either the software or the hardware of the system, then the Unison company or any of the other four large companies can has to go to the EAC, go back to one of the two labs, and get their system rechecked and recertified. And so the last time that happened was in uh, November of 21 for the system that we currently have. I'm, I'm, I'm sure with the rest of the elected officials up here, we're not well versed in all of this. Um, with the different certifications. It is kind of concerning that the EAC is really just doing a spot check, of uh, checking the overall system and saying, yes, you're good to go, here's your certificate, versus physically coming in and checking machines to make sure nothing's been tampered with. 
So the EAC does a full comprehensive test of the hardware and software of the entire system. I would not call that a spot check. M me and my staff make sure that each individual machine is properly working. As well as open the machine and we physically cut the wire. In January 2024, a computer scientist demonstrated in court how he could manipulate a Dominion voting machine using only a pen, a fake $10 voter card, or a $100 USB device. In a matter of seconds, he could rig the machine to print out as many ballots as he wanted. I'm gonna explain how you fake a Dominion voting machine. This is all public information anyone can find on the internet. You take a pen and you insert it into the power button on the back of the machine and you hold it down for five seconds. This reboots the machine in safe mode and gives you super user access. This gives you unlimited ability to manipulate data on the machine. Now, I don't know what you think, but to me, it sounds like these machines are not very secure. But hold on, it gets worse. That example would just be one voting machine in one location. There's also a vulnerability if these machines are connected to the internet. The machines run on a version of Microsoft Windows from 2015. There are some well-known malware hacks that can access the system through the internet. If the malware infected the right file, it could change the votes in every Dominion voting machine in the county. It could also delete itself once it was done. Even if the machines were not connected to the internet, someone could infect the system simply by inserting a USB device. Why are we using these machines in our elections? In every single case where a US voting machine has been analyzed by, by competent security researchers, they have found vulnerabilities that would let someone inject malicious software and change election data. Every single case. There's hundreds and hundreds of testimony and videos on this kind of stuff. Um, and uh, one of the council members asked me that this doesn't specifically have anything to do with St. Charles County. And um, if you had a car that was failing uh, miserably in other states where people were getting hurt due to injuries to malfunction, you'd still want to um, recall the car. So um, in St. Charles County, we had a couple meetings with some election authority uh, professionals and, and strategists. Uh, Mike Lindell was at one of these meetings, and um, we offered uh, Kurt Barr an, a, a, a machine that would analyze the data of any voting machine. So he said, I don't want to use one because I don't want to contaminate the machine. So he was sent a brand new uh, machine that would analyze any voting machine that he pulled from stock. Then Mr. Barr said he didn't want him hooking it up to the voting machine because it would contaminate, it could contaminate his voting machine. Then he was told that we they would purchase a brand new voting machine and you could destroy it one if you're worried about that. And it sat in his office for a week and he returned it. He never took it out of the box. And then we had the thing in Augusta, where the Augusta, the, all the judges went to uh, Augusta, the election authority, and tested, uh, they're, they're given a class, and they all vote uh, an absentee ballot. All the judges vote absentee ballot. If you voted absentee, it would show a dot with a line through it that you voted. And as they're sitting in this little church in Augusta, um, the, uh, all the judges, three Democrats and three Republicans, it showed that they all, none of them voted. And they called the election authority multiple times and there was no return call or nothing that showed up. And uh, so one of the judges, I, can't, I don't know if it was a Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter because they both agree they're doing their job. And they, they, the one who they all agreed would vote, voted and it went through. So they kept calling Mr. Barr and he finally shows up in the after, near uh, polling closing time. And all three judges had an altercation with him, an argument with him. And then he called the police on them and told, tried to charge the judges for voter fraud. And they were doing their job. There was no intent to fraud whatsoever. And so then he said, I asked him how we made the correction. And he said, the Unison, or uh, wherever who the poll pad operator is, did it online. Well, how can you fix that online? They're not hooked up to the internet, remember? So these poll machines, these tablets, they're, they're most of them manufactured in China. 
And uh, there's all kinds of information out there that says that. And uh, I think it's dangerous to keep adding these to our stock, to our inventory. So I, I can provide you guys with whatever, provide you and do what you want, but I will not be supporting purchasing any more electronic machines in this county. It's a bad idea, and there's a lot of people who know that it, actually 70% of Democrats believe you should get rid of the machines and 90% of Republicans. That's, a, that's, a, that's an absolute poll. So that's, that's all I'm going to say.